the machines will throw thousands of your petitioners out of employment, whereby they are brought into great distress, are not able to procure a maintenance for their families, and are deprived of the opportunity to bring their children up to the workforce. Could this relate to AI? Given the current for Rory about the impact it could have on jobs, life, and even the continued existence of this planet. And yet, this quote originates not from this year, this decade, or even this century, but from 1786, and yet it perfectly encapsulates the situation we now see the workforce facing today. The 18th century brought about mass change as the Industrial Revolution sparked a modernization effort across Western Europe. Despite mass concern for workers' welfare and employment, our population still stands strong and has since faced not one, not two, but three events that be described as revolutions. So, are we finally facing into an epoch moment, or is this another boy crying wolf? Today, I aim to break down the most recent scientific breakthroughs and media storm that's provoked this time of uncertainty, and hopefully reduce any fears that links to popular fiction may have given you. Perhaps the most used buzz phrase of 2023, the term AI, can now be seen plastered against any number of digital products and services, despite there being no clear link between their function and any common definition of artificial intelligence at all. So what exactly is AI? As defined by the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development, AI is a machine-based system capable of influencing its environment by producing an output for a given set of objectives. Britannica states AI as being the ability of a digital computer or computer-controlled robot to perform tasks commonly associated with intelligent beings. Despite these definitions not being clear and changing, not even with the seasons, but with days of the week, we can only conclude that information goes into a magic black box and thus transformational output or work occurs. But hold that thought. A work, on the other hand, is fortunately easy to define in both UK and international law, being a person with a contract or other arrangement to do work or services in exchange for a reward. But let's again put that to a side. But once again, this theme of output or work is found, although a new variable is added to the equation, namely reward. Simply put, both AI and workers complete work, but only workers require reward. It may seem this technology has only just been unleashed with a series of breakthroughs in quick succession, whereas in actuality, AI has been in development for over 70 years. Alan Turing first spoke of AI in his 1915 research paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, in which he introduced the now ubiquitous Turing test. A conceptual examination aimed to demonstrate a machine so advanced at reproducing human behavior that it could converse with you or I without our own realization of its own mechanical origins. Although no functional device was ever built, it laid the foundation for developments that would soon follow. And speaking of, to introduce another term that is commonly used alongside AI, machine learning. Independently designed and built in 1950 by French researcher Claude Shannon with Stasis, a primitive machine learning mouse robot that could solve a maze via challenge and error while outputting its memory to a central circuit, enable it to instantly solve the maze should it come across it again, once again demonstrating input, process, and output. Machines such as Thesius utilize these machine learning technologies to help them further refine their processes and produce better outputs when given the opportunity to learn from new data. This definition may cause some people to form a link between this process and the biological function of human learning, and at a high level it does, both in concept and scientific foundation. From birth, humans learn to form their behaviours and knowledge of this world by processing and learning from shared interactions and experiences. As humans increase their experience, they grow into fully formed beings, which we call adults. It may therefore seem logical to assume that machine learning is equal in scope to a human's ability to learn. However, that would be wrong. The topic of this conversation, AI, which is a crucial difference in this comparison. Machines have long been seen as superior to humans when it comes to their ability to process numerical or logical data. That is, after all, why they were so widely adopted in the first place. 
machine learning then furthers this by introducing new processing methods and tools for large data sets. Computers do also have their weaknesses, however, which can primarily be found in the inability to decipher language, emotion, and the less rational thought that we humans are so fond of using. This is where AI intervenes and becomes an additional processing layer on top, which aims to merge together many machine learning algorithms to effectively mimic human behavior. This is what enables modern technologies such as ChatGPT to be so user-friendly as you are effectively conversing with a human rather than reading a response designed to be read by a human. To many, this makes AI a vague and confusing term that can only be defined in relation to organic thought. But once again, let's hold that thought. But since models of Thesus in the 1950s, how have we got to these modern technologies, such as ChatGPT? Scientists such as Arnold Mirabel see AI as having four fundamental building blocks that define their effectiveness. <coughs> Quantity of data, machine learning, compute power, and human expertise. And that once we can combine all these four aspects together, we will have a machine sufficiently advanced enough to be defined as true AI. So let's break these down. Data is said to be more valuable than money by some, which has prompted large organizations like Meta, the parent company of Facebook, to release free products that sustain themselves by the harvest and sale of this precious resource. Around 120 zettabytes of data are said to be transferred yearly by Google, and with the same tech giant pointing to only 1.2 million data points being required for AI to function to baseline, I think it's safe to say we have formed these large data sets necessary. As previously mentioned, machine learning has continued to grow as models such as AlphaGo by Google have become dominating gaming circuits. Despite the rules of Go being relatively simple, simply adding stone to a 19 by 19 grid to gain territory, the average game lasts for over 150 moves and accumulates to a massive 10 to the power of 360 possible board configurations. That is vastly more configurations than there are atoms in the universe. This means the algorithms that chess AI have previously relied on cannot be used, as the optimal move processing time will last many years, and I believe single-handedly showcases the incredible power this technology has to offer. Our ability to improve compute power has also massively increased, as, for example, transistor size, a common factor used in the power of a processor, may have seemed small at five micrometers in the 1980s, but now seems hugely bloated compared to the cutting-edge 0.34 nanometer chiplets now in production, or a 99.9932% reduction in size. And as the final factor, human expertise is a rather difficult philosophical principle to tackle, as we as a population are still not sure what this entails. However, scientists, as helpfully as they often do, have simplified this to only include the ways that we as organic beings interact with one another and solve challenges. This includes the processing of natural language, which is how we talk both in text and verbal conversation, rather than the strictly structured programming languages such as Python or C that computers have been built to understand. Machines that utilize this technology have only just been released, and yet have already shown how powerful AI can truly be. Over the course of me standing here, we have now collected a series of three points that I believe will show our future relationship with AI. Magic transformational outputs, lack of reward, and relation to organic thought. But how do these link with our future? In the past 10 years, many startups have formed aiming to improve these AI technologies. ChatGPT, sorry, OpenAI, is one such competitor with their primary product, ChatGPT. As one of the first examples of technology to hit the market, it has shown how capable and how powerful it can truly be, being capable of writing essays, rewriting reports, and even producing complex programs with just a simple inputted prompt. Despite this apparent success, the technology is still very much in its beta stages and has a habit of being confidently wrong. Google's Project Bard, for example, has notoriously and repetitively failed to answer the question of the first photo taken outside of our universe, misidentifying it to be from the James Webb Space Telescope rather than the correct European Southern Observatory's BLT 15 years prior. Despite this, many companies have faced fear of missing out and have already begun rushing to implement this software into their programs and workflows. A strategy we will only be able to rate in hindsight. We now have the benefits, risks, 
and, most importantly, the ability of the technology to find. But how can we possibly predict the magnitude of impact it will have on our workforce in the future? Potentially, by looking to the past. As previously mentioned, although AI has not touched our workforce before, many other events throughout history have. Seen as one of the earliest accounts of mechanical replacement, the 1780s prompted mass change in Britain as the Industrial Revolution swept across the growing workforce. Manual labour, which had previously employed vast swathes this said workforce, was now being replaced by steam and iron. The steam engine revolutionised transport, reduced reliance on the horse-drawn carriage, and enabled three operators to ferry 100 passengers, leading to massive cost savings. Many therefore assumed that the technology would suddenly replace all workers, quickly enveloping every trade. However, this ideology never came to fruition, due to a singular inability of the machine, the ability to independently think. The engine excelled at its single job of providing drive, however, required human operators to direct and fuel, while the weaving loom required human ingenuity to set up and operate. In fact, these limitations led to entirely new industries of operation and maintenance being formed, massively reducing the job-seeking population and enabling those previously impacted by physical disability to partake in this workforce. So, AI isn't entirely negative. And yet, despite this positive precedent for greater change, opportunity, and equality for all, it has been predicted by TeamStage that over 1.7 million jobs have been lost to automation since, and that by 2030, this figure could balloon to a massive 20 million jobs lost. As companies have continued to grow and expand, so have their mechanical operations, and the machines have replaced many of the accessible jobs they once created. A recent report by DECA Group found that only 4% of our population believe their jobs are imminently at risk of AI, and with the same statistics, pointed to this figure being as high as 85%, many are concerned about the lack of knowledge shown by our workforce. And yet, in some form of conclusion, I believe the implementation of AI in our workforce is not all doom and gloom, but that governments need to cooperate to ensure legislation is created that ensures a safe and sustainable introduction of technology, and, most importantly, that they focus on education for their citizens and members alike. And to finish on a quote by Jan Likan, our intelligence is what makes us human, and AI is only an extension of that quality. Thank you for listening.